So have you ha had to deal with any behaviour management issues? Well, there was one in particular incident which springs to mind. Um, one student, John, approached another student, Joe, to tell him off. Um, I didn't really know what to do, so I kind of just yelled at both of them. So how can we help Claire and all our new teachers deal with challenging behaviour? Well, the Ellen report indicates that if teachers were better classroom managers, less disruptive behaviour would occur. We have a promoting positive behaviour policy, which is similar to many other schools. At the heart of this policy are the five C's, clarity, compassion, consistency, consequences and communication. If Claire finds herself in a similar situation again, she should remain calm. Perhaps she could then redirect you to an activity or task to remove him from the situation. Then firmly and calmly tell the class to return to their task. This will give John a chance to rectify his behaviour. Finally, take John to one side after the event and encourage him to identify what is wrong with his behaviour. So, as an expert, what does policy have to say about this? Well, the Every School A Good School policy outlines the statutory duty of the governors and the principal with regards to behaviour management. The principal is in charge and has responsibility for ensuring that all staff members are familiar with the school's policy and that the agreed practices are applied consistently. Indeed, these are incorporated into Article 3 and Article 6 of the Education Order 1998. The General Teaching Council of Northern Ireland has 27 competencies which all teachers need to become familiar with, part particularly the competencies 6, 7, 10 and 22 would be of particular benefit to teachers when dealing with difficult or challenging behaviour. What has been your experience of working with children with special educational needs, Claire? Well, there's a student called Tom who sometimes goes out with a learning assistant to help him with his reading, um, but I noticed recently that his writing hasn't been very productive um, I tried to give him extra help and um, it made things worse. Um, also, we've got a student called Aoife who's very capable but um, she's a bit withdrawn when working with grips so I asked her how she'd like to work with them but it didn't really help things at all. Okay, so uh, what would be school policy for these situations? A teacher needs to know the pupils in their class and who has a special educational need that is addressed by an individual education plan, an IEP. The teacher must provide support in partnership with the SEN assistants as set out in the pupils IEP. A teacher must be aware of the plan before acting to remedy a situation which may be to the detriment of the pupil. So as an expert, do you have any guidance on how to appropriately address these issues? Well again, the GTCNI competence 9 requires that all trainee teachers should know their responsibilities laid out in the SEN code of practice and also be aware of the features of common special needs. Competence 15 requires that lessons should be enable all pupils to meet objectives and foresee areas of difficulty. All teaching staff, including trainee teachers, should be made aware of the school's SEM procedures as stated in the Code of Practice. A consistent approach must be taken to deal with the difficulties of a child. Claire should liaise with the class teacher and the SEM coordinator in order to draw up an IEP for each child identified as having special needs. The plan will set out the nature of difficulties and define realistic targets so that all children will have full access to all the curriculum. So Claire, what was your experience of diversity in your placement? Well, as you're aware, there was an incident between a student called Jolene and a newcomer student called Kamal, um, which arose in my form class. Jolene shouted a racist remark um, and other people nodded in agreement. So how do you think you dealt with that? Honestly, I didn't deal very well with, this, with the situation. Um, I wasn't aware of the school policy or Kamal's background um, or his individual um, education plan um, as a newcomer. As Pollard suggests, my classroom should be a safe space which embraces diversity and promotes mutual understanding and respect. And I feel to achieve this. Following the school policy, the class should be reminded that such comments do not align with the class charter or with the school motto. The Every School A Good School policy accentuates the importance that all students feel valued and welcomed and Pantic and Florian depict teachers as agents of inclusion and social justice. Therefore, after class, Claire's focus should have been on Kamal's personal needs to ensure as an asylum seeker that he feels welcomed in the school. She should listen carefully to Kamal and if no language barriers exist, 
ask questions to decipher if Kamal is being bullied. Claire should also have addressed Jolene's comment and find out if she has repeated something which has been expressed elsewhere. Following school policy, Claire should have passed this information on to the head of year and check in with Kamal the following day. So how should a teacher handle diversity in the school environment? Well, two competences that Claire needs to develop are number eight and 22, which acknowledge issues can arise. By engaging with these, Claire will adopt an inclusive pedagogy which Spratt and Florian suggest will prevent individuals from being marginalised in the classroom. In addition, the CRED report suggests implementing a Cultural Awareness Day to celebrate diversity. As Kamal's form tutor, Claire must also ensure he is provided with daily support and encourage teachers to help him build positive relationships and develop confidence through work group work activities or introducing a body system. So what was your opinion on Claire's relationships in the school? Well in the future it would be helpful to Claire to get to know her pupils as individuals. It will help her understand their behaviours and reactions better as well as showing students that you acknowledge them and respect them as individuals. This, every school a good school policy states that teachers are committed and enthusiastic, enjoying a positive relationship with their pupils and with other school-based staff and dedicate it to improving learning. So do you have any tips uh, that would help a student teacher form positive relations, relationships when on placement? Competences 10, 16 and 23 are significant to Claire's experience. 10 indicates the importance of learning communication strategies and 16 directs us to using these strategies with other adults to aid in student learning, such as with the learning support assistant. Furthermore, 23 re-establishes this point, demanding teacher collaboration with teaching and support staff, parents and external agencies. Hargreaves Working Consensus details agreed ways of getting on together and emphasises the importance of classroom relationships and a sense of respect and understanding between teacher and pupil. Initial encounters also establish the teacher's fairness. Pollard indicates that an initial encounter Pupils expect the teacher to set a small number of formal overt rules. Often these can and should be derived from the whole school policy and practices. Alongside class routines, Chaplin explains that these offers pupils a sense of personal and psychological safety. Another useful strategy is to gain student opinion on lessons. Pollock states that teachers should consult with children on how they feel about classroom activities. This can be done in a number of different ways. Enhancing your classroom climate is your overall aim to be able to connect with pupils socially and emotionally, using strategies to measure the classroom experience.